to see you. I do have a few announcements that I need to make this morning. Let's not forget about the hot meal. Uh, you are invited to enjoy a free hot meal. It is going to be Saturday, September the 28th. Um, let's not forget, um, there, there's still some things that we need in that. Uh, mashed potatoes, green beans, uh, peach cobbler, tea, lemonade. And also, if you have uh, uh, 18 quart cookers, uh, we're in need of two of those also, 18 quart cookers. If, if anybody has one of those that we can use for that, that would also be awesome. If you can bring any of these items, uh, please uh, let uh, Sister Cherie know by Wednesday. Uh, and like I say, you know, this this right here, just it holds dear to my heart. Come out. Enjoy yourself. You know, this this is for our community. Uh, just come out and be a part of that. Uh, also, uh, be in preparation and, and start thinking about Hallelujah Night, what you want to bring, if you want to help. And, and those things, uh, like I say, that, that's coming up next month. Uh, we always do that for the children of the community. Uh, also, uh, is there any more announcements that needs to be made? Any more? I know we have uh, be in prayer for the McVeigh family, uh, be in prayer for the Arnold family. Uh, is there anybody else be in prayer for Brother Matthew and his family? Uh, Anybody else? Anybody? Yes. Molly Garcia. Praise God. Sure will, brother. Let's remember that family also. Any more? Let us pray, church. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, God, we just come to you this morning. Father God, I just praise you and I thank you for waking me up. This morning, Father God, your goodness and your mercies, the Lord, Father God, they are forever. We just come this morning, Father God, just to give you the praise and the glory, the Lord, Father God. Thank you for the very breath, the Lord, Father God. The Lord, Father God, we worship you, we praise you, and we love you, the Lord, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, and we all say, Amen. Savior, Redeemer, lifted me from the miry clay. Almighty, forever, and I have never been the same since you came here. From the everlasting into the world we live, the Father's only Son. You live. My Savior, Redeemer, you lifted me from the miry clay. Almighty, forever, and I have never been the same since you came near. From the everlasting into the world we live, the Father's only Son. Since you came near from the everlasting into the world we live, the Father's only Son, you live, 
lived, you died, you rose again on high. You opened the way for the world to live again. Hallelujah for all you've done. Hallelujah for all you've done. That you came near from the everlasting into the world we live. The Father's only Son. You lived, you died, you rose again on high. You opened the way for the world to live again hallelujah for all you've done hallelujah for all you've done hallelujah for all you've Can I get some ushers up here, please? All that he's done. You know, one of my pet peeves is somebody saying they can't. They can't do something. Twice this morning already it's been shown to me we can do anything through God. He can do anything through us. I don't personally like the word can't because if one man can do it, so can I. Now that I have the power of Jesus in me, I know without a shadow of a doubt, there's nothing that can't be done. And if we all walk that way every day, these little issues we have in life, they're not issues anymore. The man went from the cross to the grave to heaven for us so that we can do all things through him. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord, just as humble as we know how. Lord, we ask and pray that you just bless these offerings and these tithes and multiply them beyond our belief. Lord, just bless each and every person here. Lord, we pray for this service. Let us all open our ears and our hearts and our minds to hear what you have to tell us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All of the earth makes straight a highway, a path for the Lord. Jesus is coming soon. Call back the sinner, wake up the same. Let every nation shout of your faith. Jesus is coming like a bride waiting for her groom we'll be a church ready for you every heart longing for our king we sing even so come lord jesus Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. All of creation and all of the earth make straight a highway, a path for the Lord. Jesus is coming soon. 
call back the sinner, wake up the saint, and let every nation shout of your faith. Jesus is coming soon. Like a bride waiting for her groom, we'll be a church ready for you every heart longing for our king we say the so come lord jesus come even so come lord jesus come There will be justice, and all will be new. Your name forever, faithful and true. Jesus is coming soon. Like a bride waiting for her groom, we'll be a church ready for you every heart long. Even so come, Lord Jesus come. Even so come, Lord Jesus come. So we wait, we wait for you. God, we wait. You're coming soon, so we wait, we wait for you, God, we wait, you're coming. Like a bride waiting for her groom, we'll be a church ready for you every heart longing for our King. We sing like a bride waiting for her groom, we'll be a church ready for you every heart longing for. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. Nothing in heaven 
would start one more can I say let me draw near to you one more can I say let me draw near again won't you come Lord Jesus 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 whatever it looks like Whatever it sounds like, come, Lord Jesus. Whatever it looks like, whatever it sounds like, come, Lord Jesus. Whatever it looks like, whatever it sounds like, come, Lord Jesus. Whatever it looks like, whatever it sounds like, come. Lord Jesus, there's nothing more we desire, nothing at all. And we believe you're the one, the one worth it all. There's nothing more we desire, nothing at all. One worth it all. Come like a river, 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 come like a river. Come like a river, come like a river, come like a river, come like a river, come like a river. Overflow the banks of my heart, overflow the banks of my heart, overflow the banks of my heart, overflow the banks of my heart. 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 Come like a river. 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 Won't you come, Lord? Jesus, won't you come, Lord? Jesus, won't you come, Lord? Jesus, won't you come, Lord?
who seek your face, I'm burning, longing for you. I so long and even thanks for you. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God, for the living God. Incline your ear, trembling and tears I'm yearning. To the throne of grace, to seek your face, I'm burning, longing for you. I need you, I need you, nothing, no place, no one else will do, I need you, I need you, for you satisfy the longing inside, I need you, I need you, nothing, no place, no one else will do, I need you. I need you, but you satisfy the longing inside in my soul long and even thanks for you. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God, for the living God. And incline your ear. With trembling and tears, I'm yearning to the throne of grace to seek your face. I'm burning, I'm longing for you, and I need you. I need you. Nothing, no place, no one else will do. I need you. I need you. For you satisfy the longing inside, I need you, I need you. Nothing, no place, no one else will do, I need you, I need you. For you satisfy the longing inside, da, 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 da. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare your heart living home. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your 
your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and feel the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare your high living hope, your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free. And my shame is undone in your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory. God is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. You glad to be in the house of God? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Several people out, some still on vacation, some sick, some had to work. Amen. But God knew who would be here. Amen. Amen. After service, immediately after service, uh, we'll try to meet in one of the rooms in the back, if not upstairs in one of the rooms. But anyone in leadership, praise and worship is welcome to come. We want them to be there. We want uh, our leaders, our board. I know you're looking around saying some of the leaders aren't here, amen, but I'm telling you the leaders are here, amen. But unless they had to work or do something, the faithful people are leaders that people can follow, amen. Unless they're on vacation or they, you know, something, you know, I got up this morning and stomped my toe and I didn't come, I wouldn't be much of a leader, would I? 
Amen. If I'm just going through a storm and I don't show up, I wouldn't be much of a leader. Glory to God. Leaders are people that the Bible says find themselves faithful. Amen. He finds them faithful. That a man would be faithful. That's a leader. Amen. So if you feel like you are part of leadership or or maybe we'll have a little more understanding, but we got a few things to meet on and it'll be brief because I'll be hungry after preaching 41 verses. <laughs> Amen. And someone said, if you got 41 verses, I've heard you preach a while on just a few, but I, I'm going to try to be quick this morning. I know I always say that, but I don't know if I gave him the title. I don't know if I wrote it down or not. Born blind. Amen. Born blind. I put down here, born blind physically and mentally and spiritually. We were all born blind and we didn't know it. Amen. Children's church being dismissed this morning. Amen. That that sort of will stun some people when they hear born blind. But make sure you come tonight. Brother Bobby Jackson will be ministering to us. Uh, it's a well, I played basketball years ago. He's saved. I'm saved. I don't know if he was saved back then or not. I know I wasn't, but he's a good man. It'll be a good service. I hope he brings his, his uh, I can't say what it is, I, I, trombone or trumpet or whatever it is. But man, he can play Amazing Grace with that thing. It's awesome. So I hope he brings it. hope uh, part of the folks go to church with him come and we just join in and have a service and worship God. Amen. That's what it's about, giving the Lord all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. He's worthy. He couldn't play that unless God gave him the ability and the talent and the want to to practice to do it. Amen? Glory to God. If you'll stand for the reading of the Word of God, we're going to read a, a passage of Scripture and then pray and then have the Lord lead us. Hopefully I won't go through. It depends on your amens and your omis or you know, just amen helps and we'll get through quickly. And I believe that. Amen. But I hope not to read all of them. But sometimes you tell people, go home and read it and get an understanding of it. And you know by looking at folks, sometimes they're not going to go home and do it. Half of you, man. He said, we don't read. You ought to read every day. Glory to God. This is the meat and this is the food you've got to have. The rest of it just sustains you and holds you. Keeps this physique that we got. Amen. Glory to God. And as in chapter 9 of John, it says, born blind. To think about this, born blind. And I wrote down, just off the record, physically, mentally, and spiritually. Every one of us have been to a place to where we've been blind. I've been blind many times. Glory to God. But I ain't blind to what God's doing. There's a whole family getting baptized next Sunday in this place So that. That is, I can see that, that God is still working in people's lives. I heard someone say they're building a church and they're doing a bid on it. And he said, they may not do the baptistry because they don't baptize a lot of people. I thought, man, don't build the church. Someone said, you don't have a baptistry. We got a portable baptistry. And if that don't work, we'll go across the street in that creek over there and we'll baptize in the creek. I still believe in being baptized. It's a principle of the Word of God. You get saved, you follow up and get baptized. <laughs> it's a part of not being in rebellion to the Word of God. Amen. I've had people in this church tell me before, I don't think you got to be baptized. I tell them, well, I don't think you need to be saved. Then. We're going to cut it out, cut it all out. Praise God. Blind. Born blind. And as Jesus passed by, He saw a man which was born, which was blind from his birth. Now listen to this, it says, consequently spiritually blind from birth. He was blind physically, he was blind mentally, and he was blind spiritually from birth. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. God, I thank you for these people. These are your people. These are your children. God, I'm just glad to be a part of their lives, to be a minister, to be able to speak into their lives and see them transform. See their lives change, God. See them go from great and mighty things in the kingdom of God. Lord, I pray, God, you'll move upon every heart and life and mind and soul. And God, when we leave this place, I pray that we can see and I pray that we can hear 
In the name of Jesus Christ, I do pray. Amen. And Jesus passed by, and he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did send this man or his parents that he was born blind? Now listen, they, they, they failed to go back and read Job. If they'd have read Job, they'd have known it didn't matter if it was a sin or not a sin, whatever. Some things are, and it is because of sin, but in reality, some things are done just to give God glory. Now, I've, I've often read this. If you just read it like a book, you just, you just go down to the store and buy you a book and you read it and you don't get noticed. You just read it to be reading it or it's a fiction or it's a, a romance or it's a, a comedy or if it's a action, whatever it may be. You may just read it to be reading that book. But when you read the Word of God, you need to read the Word of God with an open mind and an open heart and a spirit that says, God, I want to have understanding. I want to have knowledge. I want to have wisdom. I want to know what I'm reading. I've read through the Bible several times, and I've read through this story, and really, until I was on vacation, really didn't jump out at me what literally took place. A lot of us are self-righteous, and we don't see what's right before us, and that's what takes place in this story as it inspires. If you go study it out and look at it, and Jesus answered, neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Now, we would think that it was just to see a miracle, which in reality, there's already been a miracle. There's been water that's been turned to wine. But So, so God should have already, Jesus should have already been glorified. But he said, this was done that my, that my father, that I may be, I, I'm going to go back and look at it because I, I don't want to say something that ain't in the word. That, that God should be made manifest in Him. In other words, that we may see the power of God in Him. And that we would think that when Jesus prays for Him in a minute and His eyes is open, that was the part of manifestation. But that's not it. The story goes on even deeper for 41 verses and Jesus starts ministering to them Pharisees before it's over with, letting them know they're blinder than all. Listen to what He says. I want, I want to, it says, means that Jesus did not come to the earth to condemn men for their fallen conditions because, in fact, they are already condemned. He came to set men free by the power of God. And likewise, that's what we're here for, is to see people set free. Jesus said, greater works than these shall you do if you follow me, if you follow what? God's Word. If you follow the Word of God, greater works will follow what you do. He's saying you'll see people healed. You'll see people set free. You'll see people that were literally blind open their eyes. But that's not the key to this whole story. It ain't about being physically blind. It's about being spiritually blind to the things of God. Now listen to what he's saying. He's, now I want to go real quick to Luke 13, 2 through 5. It says, And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all Galileans because they suffered such things. Now he was saying, because and I'm going to get into this story and try to help us have a little bit of understanding about this because these people suffered and died. And Jesus was saying, do you think because these Galileans were sinners above all Galileans because they suffered such things? Go ahead to three. He said, I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall likewise perish. So Jesus was saying that if you don't have, if you have unforgiven sin in your life, if you haven't repented, see, I had to repent before I even got in the pulpit this morning. Someone said, why? I want to make sure. And I say, God, search me. That if there's anything in my life, please let me see it. Let me get it out. And let me get it under the blood. Because Jesus was saying, except you repent, you will likewise prayer. So he was saying, yeah, they've sinned and they've done wrong, but that's not the issue. That's not what's sending them to hell. And that's not the reason they're perishing. He said, the reason is, is because they have not repented of the sin that's in their life. And if you don't repent, you're going to do the same thing they did. There ain't no exceptions except for the man, Jesus Christ, and Him crucified, and that's it. And we got to go to Him and ask for forgiveness to move on in our lives. Go ahead to four. He said, or 
of these 18 upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew them? Think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? He said, you think them guys were the, the worst of the worst? He said, no, you guys are talking about the people that were watching. He's talking about the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and all that were there listening to him. He said, you think they were the, the worst in all Jerusalem? He said, he letting them know, no, you got sin too. Go ahead to five. He said, I tell you nay, but except you repent, you will all. You hear what he said? He said, except you repent, you will all likewise perish. So the key is, Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. And we didn't come to condemn the world. But we come to see people repent and get into the kingdom of God. Someone said, what does this got to do with being blind? A lot of people are blind to that. A lot of people think that we can work there. A lot of people think we can be baptized. The only way to get there is by the blood of Jesus. And the rest of it is lining up and not being in rebellion and following after the word of God. Amen. Now going back to where we were in verse 4, it said, I must work the works of him who sent me. Now listen to what he's saying. While it is day. So he's saying, I must do the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night comes when no man can work. Now we would put that in a physical term because that's the way we look. When I read through this, that's what I thought. Man, while it's daylight, we need to be working. He ain't talking about the sunshine. And he ain't talking about the daylight. He said, why you have life. Why you can breathe. Why you are here. Why you have breath. Why you have eyesight. Why you can see to do the things of God. Do it. Don't wait till you're dead. It's over with. He's talking about this span of life. Listen, we should be substituted for I. Because Jesus said, I must do the works of him who sent me. It should be read, because this is translated, or someone said, don't, don't take the Bible out of... No, I'm not. It says, we should be substituted for I, simply because those works are meant to be continued by all who follow Christ. Everyone that follows Christ... Why it is day, you should work. Why you are alive, you should work. Why you have the breath, you should testify. Why you have the opportunity, you should tell somebody about Jesus. I'll use it for an example. Brother JB was very inspirational to me while he was alive, but now JB can't speak to me from the grave. I can go back and look at a picture. I can go back and look at a video, but his time has come and it has gone. So now I can have some memories, but as far as at the church, getting on to me saying, Preacher, you need to preach every service. <laughs> I just got to remember he wanted me to preach every service. The light's gone. And darkness has come. In other words, the span of that life is over with. While he was here, he was light. Now that he's gone, the light's gone. Some people say, well, I still see the light. Well, I, you, can, you can imagine, you can go back, you can take reference, but as far as life, why the day is here, why we have the opportunity. That's what Jesus was, the whole story is talking about why we have breath and why we have life. Because while it is day, is this span of life. Why you have life and why it's still spanning and why you still got opportunity, you need to be a witness for Christ. The work shall continue. He said, listen, he said, I must work the work. So we must work the work because he said we're followers of Christ. All who follow Christ must work. He said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now listen, so what does that mean? He said, as long as I am in the world, I'm the light of the world. So as long as we are in the world, we are the light of the world. Are we not? It's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. So as long as I'm alive, I am the light of the world. As long as you're alive, you're the light of the world. Is your light dim? That's what's wrong with a lot of us. We got that dimmer on. You know, you buy them light switch, you flip it on, it's on. When I, when, when I got saved July 20, 1997, the light came on and it just stayed on. Has it been dim at times? I'm sure it has. But I've tried to follow up. I've tried to do like, you know, except you do like the Galatians. I've tried to, when I blew it, when I failed, when I done wrong, I've repented and put it under the blood and keep going forward. And I don't let people detour me. And listen, just because some people go crazy 
and act crazy and do all kinds of crazy things. I don't let D talk me. I am a fixed man. My eyes are fixed on Jesus. They're fixed on what Jesus does. Amen. Someone said, well, you, 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 you fixed on us too. Pastor. If you got it together, pastor. If you do so good, pastor. People are opening churches everywhere. Amen. If God's called you to do it, I'll anoint you with oil and send you, and we'll send the first offering to you. Glory to God. We'll try to help you in every way we can, because if God's called you, I'm for you. I'm not against you, because he ain't. There's so many people can do it better. Huh? Problem is that light has went out. <laughs> See? It's dim. It's on. It's dim. It's on. You ever know one week, man, people's on fire. The next week, they ain't. What are they trusting in? I'm trusting in the Word of God. They trust in their feelings. They trust in how things are going. They're trusting in their bank account. I can't go there. I get in trouble one. Yeah, I'll stay away from it. Because I got a lot to say in just a few moments. As long, he's saying, as long as I'm in the world. What was he saying? And he said, We are followers of Christ. He's our example. So we're followers. So if he's the light of the world, what do you tell us? We're the light of the world. What are the what are they following? He said, if they're blind, lead the blind, they end up in the ditch. Now, he wasn't talking about literally blind people. He was talking about people that were blind to the word of God. He was talking about people that were blind to the things of God. You ain't going to get out. This literally, let me tell you something. I've seen them on these shows, you know, they, they got the stick. But I'm going to tell you to get up today and follow me as I follow Christ. But I'm going to leave out the door and I'm going to be doing this. And I'm going to say, now, y'all y'all follow me. <laughs> I don't know about you, but if someone's in front of me and they blind and they can't see and they say, you follow me, Brother Kretz, and, and we'll be all right, I'm going to be like, hey, hey, you're running in traffic there, buddy. Listen to my boy. You may be leaving, but I'm going to talk to you. I ain't jumping in front of the truck with you. Because they can't see. You ain't going to follow them. So Jesus wasn't literally talking about a blind leading the blind, you know, people that were blind. He was saying blind people to the Word of God to the things of God were blind and then other people were blind and following them and he said, you all going to end up in the ditch. Now you better go study out what a ditch is. <laughs> it's a grave viewed out on both sides. Amen. You're going to wind up in the grave. You're going to wind up in a bad place. I'm going to keep this because before it's over, I might need it. <laughs> Someone said, you won't need that. I might. Some of y'all looking at me hard. Some of y'all ain't liking that. Yeah, you're a light. If you're here and you proclaim Christ, you're a light. It's just I wonder how bright your light's shining. I wonder what people see when they see you. I wonder what people hear when they hear you. I got to move. When he had thus spoken, he spit on the ground and made spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man which with the clay. He said, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went and went, he went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. Now listen to this. The, the word go to the pool symbolizes the blood of Christ, which cleanses us from all sin. So now we say, you know, go wash yourself in the blood of Christ. Make sure you got it under the blood. Make sure you repent. Make sure you're saved. Make sure you're born again. Listen, I wrote some things down. I can't even read my own writing. But I want you to know, it is no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. So if He was a light, you're a light. If, if He was an example, then you're an example. Listen to what He's saying. He's, he's saying, for the blood of Christ, which cleanses from all sin. When He said, interpret sins, means this refers to Jesus being sent from God to the, for the salvation of the whole world. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. Spiritually refers to all who are washed in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then can we see and only then. Amen. I use that a lot in preaching and teaching. And I use it a lot in witnessing the people. I said, 
When you go to John 3 and 3 and he said, except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Up to July 20, 1997, I was blind. And see, I, I didn't have the, 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 the blind stick and it wasn't leading me. You know, I've been reading a lot lately and I found out that I go into a restaurant and I forget these things and on vacation, my wife got on to me and on to me and on to me. And I said, listen, quit getting on to me about glasses. I'm okay. You know what happened? I ended up in one restaurant without glasses. Couldn't see. And wearing contacts. But I'm understanding the blind thing. But, but before July 20, 1997, I wasn't blind blind. But I was blind. I didn't understand. I couldn't see the end. I couldn't see the armies could pass about Jerusalem. I couldn't see that Christ is about to return. I couldn't see the things of the kingdom of God. I couldn't understand why you was going to church and doing what you do. I sure couldn't understand why you were giving your money at church when you could be going with me over to Tunica and we could be over there trying to hit it big. I didn't understand it and I wasn't going to do it because I was blind to the things of God. I found out after I got saved and started sowing into the kingdom of God instead of sowing over the there in the uh, tunica, I've done a whole lot better sowing into the kingdom of God than I did sowing into the world. Huh? I understood that scripture, eating the fat of the land and eating the good of the land. I eat good steak. I eat good chicken. I eat that fried chicken where the grease rolls down your chin. Amen. I ain't blind to it. I'm looking. Someone said, you need to watch what you eat. I look at every bite. My wife come in last night told her, try to lose weight, I don't want to eat that. So she brings it in, sits it on the counter. Goes back in the other room. And she come back, ain't nothing but bones laying in that box. I devoured that chicken. You, you'd have thought a buzzard got in there. Amen. But see, I was blind to the things of God. And then on I'm going to tell you how quick it happened. Just like when Jesus come by and anointed this guy's eyes, immediately he seen. We can only comprehend that in the physical. That he was blind and now he's seen. He was blind spiritually, physically, and mentally. He was blind physically, mentally, spiritually. And when his eyes opened up, he was opened up to it all. Listen, immediately he done went somewhere else and watched. He didn't see Jesus. Listen to what happens in this. Watch this. He says, the neighbors, all the neighbors begin to look. Now listen, it says, the neighbors therefore, and they which before had seen him who was blind said, now listen to this, is this, is not this he who sat and begged? Now, you don't read nothing about this man begging here after. After you come over into the kingdom of God and you follow the kingdom of God, you don't have to beg. You don't have to plead. We think we do for, for material things, but God's given us what we need. He's taking care of us. I ain't missed a meal except for when God's called me to fast since I've been saved. Even though there's times I look at the natural and look at the physical and think, man, what happens if work runs out? What are we going to do? And God says, silly boy, silly boy. Don't worry about that stuff. I got you. I'm taking care of you. Man, I cause ravens to feed you. I cause buzzards to bring you stuff. I, you'll be took care of. Don't worry about it. Someone said, where you get that? You should have been reading your Bible. You know where I got that. Listen, we, we look at the physical thing. We got to have it. That man ain't begged no time since. Not nowhere in this world. You can't find it. He begged at one time because he couldn't see. But now he can see. Not only physically, he sees spiritually. And I'm going to show it to you. And, and this is what I told you. See, I got a couple people saying amen. They want to leave her. I'm almost done. In 30, 45 minutes, we'll be out of here. You know why I didn't know I lied right then? They knew I was being serious. They said, man, if you ain't me, I'm going to get done quick. Uh, you missed it. Still ain't got it. Some said, this is he. Others said, he is like him. But he said, I am he. He want to know. It's me. It's me. It's like people, they see me now. They say, man, Brother David, I remember you 
said, how's the world treating you? I said, the world will chew you up and spit you out. I said, but the Lord's been good to me. And some of them even said, I've seen people since. And they said, Tunica was good to you too. Because a lot of people sitting here didn't know first house I bought was with Tunica money. Everyone looking now, huh? I'm going to go to Tunica. <laughs> you might not be so lucky. You might be the reason they buy the next boat. Feel them things on losing. <laughs> you walk in and see them big chandeliers. And most of the time, you paid for them chandeliers. Amen. But the first big lick I hit over there, I come back and paid for the place I was living in. Yeah. Then it wasn't long down the road, got saved. Next thing I know, I was having cars, I was having houses, I was having concrete. I was building onto my house, doing all kinds. I was like, man, praise God. Serving God's a good thing. I was blind, now I see. Huh? How did y'all get off on that? I got to get back on this. Because people would say, you know, yeah, I remember you. They remember the blind guy. It's like my brother tells some of them people in Chicago I grew up with. They said, they said how's, how's, how's wild man doing? He said, he's a pastor. He's preaching in a church down in Mississippi. They said, no, he ain't preaching in no church. Because they remember the blind guy. They remember the fool. They remember the drunk. They remember him that was. They remember that blind man. They don't know the guy that can see. Oh, praise God! I hope you get, go back and read this. Put it into your heart. Put it into your mind. Put it into your soul, and get you a vision. And think back before the day you were born again. Some of y'all still sitting there blind because you ain't born again. You get born again, you can look back. Listen, now I'm going to help. I'm trying to get through this. He wants everyone to know who he is and who performed this miracle. Despite the religious leaders, he is not ashamed of Christ, neither does he fear them. So listen, this is the issue. Back in that day, you could not do anything except for what them religious leaders were doing. And the Christ, the Messiah, had come on the scene and people were believing in him. And they said, if you believe in him, you're going to be discommunicated. And you know what we do today? I seen the thing on Facebook. Lisa gets mad at me because I get on her Facebook, but I have it. She won't you get Facebook? Too many people getting in trouble on Facebook. I don't want it. If I get in trouble on her, she's gonna see it. I start flirting with a woman, she's gonna be wondering why, why does this woman be fresh with me? <laughs> she, they, 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 they'll think it's her. <laughs> hey, see what I'm saying? So I just use her. That way I don't I stay out of trouble. But I seen on there it says. When it was my matter of fact, it was my niece that posted it. It said, When you share what they want to hear, and it showed an auditorium with hundreds of thousands of people, and said, When you share what they when you share the truth, and it showed just a handful of people. But I disagree. It can be this place right here can be full of people. There's a remnant of people that want the truth and not to waver off the truth and want to be the light of the world and not them. As long as you have breath, you are a light to the world. You are in Christ, you're no longer in darkness, you're walking after the things of of God, not at the things of the world, not at the things of you, not what you want to do, not your desire, but what God wants to do. So I went on vacation last week and I wanted to go again this week. And the Lord and Lisa both said, no, you can't go. <laughs> I had to mow the yard. Had things to do. You can't stay too far gone because someone will devour the sheep. Some of them will say, come on over here. You don't have to listen to that little short fat guy. You come over here. You can do what you want over here. We won't say nothing about what you do. I'd rather you be mad at me right now, right here today. And you stand before him one day and he says, you was an awful dim light because you'll be re rewarded for the good, and do, the good and the bad you do in this body and this life. And why there is day, why there's your life span. See, Jordan, my son, it's over with. Yesterday was my grandbaby's birthday, Noah, that passed away. He'd have been 12 years old, 12 years old one day. Today, but see, he was an inspiration that 20 months that he was here. He was a little light. He was a little bright. He was always laughing. He was always happy. And that's why we should always be happy. 
but we need to see what the Lord's doing in our lives and realize we're a light to a lost and dying world and live after the things of God and not the things of the world. Listen, and I'm, I'm getting ready to close. Someone said, when are you going to close? It'll, it'll be, just give me a few minutes. Therefore they said unto him, How were your eyes opened? He answered and said, A man who is called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam and wash. And he, now he's, he said, And I went and washed and I received sight. So now the neighbors and the people, they're talking to him. They're trying to figure out, man, well, this looks like him. Surely this is him. I don't know. That's like people see me and, and they look at me and they think, yeah, that's that's supposed to, you know why? This is where this is where we associate one another, and this is where we need to realize people look and they see, yeah, that's David. He he's still the same David, he's still the same person. He, he's getting a little older, he's getting a little gray, he's looks like he's shrinking a little bit, amen. But but he he's 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 plumbed out a little bit, but glory to God, that's him. And then they're looking, and then they see how you act and how you live. They say, Is that brother Travis? No, that ain't brother Travis, brother Travis. I know we don't have cold one in hand. He'd be stumbling around, talking bad. No, 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 that ain't Brother Keith. Is that Brother Keith? No, that ain't Brother Keith. Brother Keith, I know. He'd be, yeah, this, this it, but then, it, but he's like him. He looks like him. He's just not acting like him. Amen. He's throwing me off. See, it wasn't the, see, they knew him blind, physically. Now he's walking around with no, he didn't have a stick. He can see. But not only could he see, he also knew it was a man now, you need to be able to tell people why you see what you see and hear what you hear. It's because of the man, Christ Jesus, that touched your blinded eyes and opened your deaf ears. See, I was deaf before July 20th, 1997, to the things of God. I was blind to the things of God. I couldn't understand, couldn't comprehend. You could talk to me, and you might as well have been talking that wall because I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. I couldn't see it. Because in John 3 and 3 said, except you be born again, you cannot see the things of the kingdom of God. You can't see it, you can't understand it, you can't hear it, you don't know it. Some people sitting under my voice today say, man, I'm, I'm confused. It's because you haven't had the born again experience. Yeah, you might have said the prayer. But after you've been touched by Jesus, you'll see. After Jesus touched you, you'll hear. After Jesus touched you, you'll walk. And you won't be lame. Listen to one thing. Go back and study it for yourself. We look at everything in the physical. It says, proclaims the man repeating almost exactly what Jesus told him to do. He began where all disciples must. With the man, Jesus Christ. Listen, there was a group singing a praise and worship group singing the day I got saved. But you know what transformed me? Was the blood of Jesus. Amen. It's when I got out of that seat and I went to that altar and I accepted what Christ had for me. And I said, God, forgive me a sinner. Forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of all my transgressions. Lord, save me. Be my Lord and be my Savior. And when them hands went up, I surrendered to Him. I began to see that day. I begin to understand that day. I begin to have knowledge that day. I begin to have wisdom that day. I begin to realize that why it's day, I need to work. And so do you. In other words, why you have breath, you need to tell them why you do what you do. He said, then said they unto him, where is he? He said, I don't know where he's at. Think about that for a moment. Man's blind. He was blind, got clay on his eyes. He don't know where he was. He don't even know what he looks like. You would think. Now, verse 13, I'm just going to skip. I, I, I had a lot to say, and I got a short time to get it. I want you to go back and read it. The Pharisees call the man. They get him in there. They start asking questions. It's just like today. People don't believe. You know, they, they say, Brother David got saved. Well, I don't believe he got saved. They start watching you at work. Huh? Had a man tell me one time he was going to run that mouth what he was going to do. I hadn't been saved long. So... I might have even been an associate pastor at the time, but I think I was deacon. But it don't matter. I was saved. The morning I was doing right, and the man wanted to run his mouth talking about what he's going to do. So I'll jump down off this cab and beat your devil's hand. He says, You can't do that. I said, I can and I will. Because I wasn't yet sanctified. I, I, Lord hadn't 
quite open my eyes to everything. I'm still in the flesh. I thought I'd still beat the tar out of you. Not just because I'm saying, oh man, I can't whoop you. But then he says, you a preacher, you can't do that. Now I realize the extent of that and the importance of that. But then I didn't. I was really going to jump off scaffold and hit him. See, what it was is because I was the boss and I was telling him what to do, he's going to jump on me. And I thought, just because I'm serving the Lord and I'm the bottom, I'll let you whoop me just because I'm serving the Lord. And that's where it spawned from. But I realized now the best thing to do is just try to love them, try to push them through and just try to tell them this is the right way to do this. And let them get their anger out. Listen, we're examples. We're the song. So the Pharisees start asking him questions. Who did this? And they... You just had to go about who was it, who did it. Now they're mad. You know what they're mad about? He done it on the Sabbath day. Oh, you didn't do nothing on the Sabbath day. Had them upset because now he done this. But if they could do something that caused them gain, they would do it because they were blind. They thought we're we're the Pharisees and we're the Sadducees. So we can pretty much do what, and we can't. As pastors, we can't do what we want. We have to do what God tells us. And we got to follow the word of God. And we got to do it in the right way because the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So we got to follow after the word of God as teachers, as preachers, as ministers, as whatever, as leaders. So we follow the word of God. We don't follow the system of the world. I quit doing the things I used to do and started doing the things God told me to do. Now, listen, it gets all the way down to go through this. They're asking questions, asking who did it. He tells them, they say he's not of God, he's a sinner, and blah, blah, this and that. And they can't believe it. And then I'm going to pick up in 22 and just read real quickly. It says, These fake his parents. They called the parents. Now the parents didn't want to get this. Did you know that some of us have jobs and we won't say nothing about Jesus because we're afraid to lose our job? Not realizing that if you're going to be a witness and be a light in the place that you had, God's got a better job for you. I had a man tell me one time, he said, you don't do that out here, you do that in church. I said, no, I do that everywhere. I serve Jesus first. You fall in under my family somewhere. You on down the line, buddy. Your job ain't that important. Do you know I ain't worked for that man probably in 15 years and ain't missed a paycheck yet? He wasn't controlling my destiny. God was. I don't witness on his job no more, but I still witness in the jobs I'm in. I tell them when I start, I am a pastor. I'm not coming on Wednesday unless it's an emergency. It might cost me some jobs, but God has blessed me with men that are Christians that say, glory to God, that's fine, I'm fine with that. And I tell them when there's a funeral, I won't be here. When there's something going on in the kingdom of God, I'm out. I won't be here. And I don't take my phone in up to the podium when I'm preaching a funeral and have the phone with me. So if you try to get in touch with me on preaching a funeral, you ain't going to get me. Huh? Oh, it separates you from a lot of people. Yeah. Well, the parents was... Now the, 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 the Sadducees can't believe it themselves. This man comes in, the neighbors say he was blind. The other people say he was blind. He even said he was blind. Now he sees. He says Jesus did. They say he was a sinner. He said, whether he was a sinner or not, I don't know. All I know is I was blind and now I see. So then it pops up and the parents, they would say, hey, he's of age, ask him. It gets into that. Then we're picking up at 20. He said, these spake the parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Edge communicated, which cut them off from family. It cut them off from social ties. It cut them off from employment. It literally cut them off from everything in that day. So they feared. So they said, hey, this is it. He said, therefore, his parents, he is of age, asked him. Then again, called they the man who was blind and said unto him, give God praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said to them, whether he be a sinner, no, I'm not. Of one thing I know that whereas I was blind, now I see. Then said they unto him again, what did he to you? How opened he your eyes? He answered and said to them, I told you already and you did not hear. Listen, he said, wherefore would you hear it again? Will you be his disciples? Then they railed him. They got on to him, started persecuting him. But listen to what he's telling them. He said, I done told you. And that's the way it is in church. You don't tell them over and over and over again. I say, hey, I can't hear. Hey, I'm blind. I don't understand. I don't have to get born again. 
Get it under the blood. Repent or you'll like wise prayers. People blind sitting in church. People deaf sitting in the church. People sitting here today ain't heard me. People sitting here today can't see. They don't have no understanding, no knowledge, no wisdom. Why? They're not yet born again. And I'm laying out a map for you today. And listen to what he says. He said, we know that God spake, spake in the Moses. He said, well, no, we're not his disciples. We're, the Mo, we're, we're disciples of Moses. Listen to what he said. For we follow, we know not where this man is. We're following Moses. We don't know this man. The man answered and said unto them, where, why herein is a marvelous thing that you know not from whence he is, and yet he has opened mine eyes. And a fact says, even you ought to have believed. And only God can open the blinded eyes. Listen to what he says in verse 31. He said, now we know that God hears, not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and does his will, him he hears. Listen to what he said. And does his will. Any man. Listen to what he said. Any man. But if any man be a worshiper of God and does his will, him he hears. So you know why we pray? Because we're worshipers of Him. Amen. And we're following His will. So we know He hears us when we pray. So listen, and, and I'm trying to get done. Sister Mary, it won't be long. It, it says this, proclaims the deepest truth of divine revelation about the condition or the acceptance of prayer. It is obvious that the man had the knowledge of God that few people in Israel Possessed at that time. You know, I, I know people say don't write in your Bible, but I wrote this. I said, or here. P few people have that knowledge and understanding to know that to do God's will, He hears you. You better thank God He didn't give you what you wanted. <laughs> Some of you wanted a mess. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of a blind if this man were not of God, he could do nothing. Did you hear that? If he's not of God, he could do nothing. Thus, the Pharisees compelled for a few moments to hear from one known as a beggar of the street in the streets word teaching along the finest lines and deepest experience. So now this blind beggar who had begged and been blind is sitting in front of the Pharisees and he's literally teaching them. And they're listening. Even they were stunned. They were like, this guy's literally teaching us. And you, it, it's flipped. He said, now he sees spiritually. They realize this. You'll have to go back in a depth study of this and just look at it. He said, they answered and said unto him, you were altogether born in your sins. And did you teach us? See, now they done got it. They're sitting there in the judgment seat and they done realize this guy's blind. And all of a sudden they realize, you were born in your sins and you're going to teach me self-righteousness. They didn't say we were born. Did you know everyone was born in the sin? I preached on it last week. goes right along with this. David was conceived from his mother in sin. Th think about that for a moment. So these Pharisees then got so holy that they thought, you were born in your sins, but they never mentioned we were born because they we were all born in our sins. So it's only when you get born again that you can actually see and you can actually teach. And that's what David said. He said, after that I'm saved, then will I teach transgressors their transgressions. But David wasn't in no condition to do it. Just like David before July 20, 1997, wasn't in no condition to do it. And if David walks in sin and lives in sin, he still wouldn't be in no condition. He had to repent or he'll likewise perish. I use me for this example, but it falls on us. It ain't, you know, you were blind and now you're going to try to teach us. You were born in your sins, but now you're going to try to tell me. And that's the way we do sometimes. We get so holy that we forget what manner of person we were. We look through a glass darkly and God says, take a self-examination of yourself and realize who you were. And who I realize who you are and why you're who you are? It's because God took scales off your eyes. He saved you. 
And he opened up your eyes that you can see where you were once blind. And I'm closing. Sister Mary, you come up. They are self-righteous. And then they said you were born in your sins, but they never mentioned themselves. Listen to this. He said, Jesus heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said to him, do you believe in the Son of God? Now listen, I'm going to tell you something. I know he probably knew it was Jesus because he could probably feel the anointing. And there was probably people following Jesus, but he ain't seen Jesus yet. Remember, he was blind. Jesus put spittle and mud on his eyes. Told him to go wash. And after he went and washed and made himself clean. After you go wash in the blood of Jesus and make yourself clean, then you can see. And then Jesus tells him right here, he says, and he found him and said unto him, do you believe in the Son of God? Listen to this. He said, he answered and said, who is he that I might believe on him? Did I leave something out? Hey, glory to God. I got one person that's really paying attention. Don't let me slide something in on you. I might preach you a lie. This blind guy who wasn't able to see, who wasn't able to know, who wasn't able to, he said, who is he, Lord? Who is he? Lord, even he knew. Been blind his whole life. Ain't never seen nobody. But all of a sudden, the person that he sees, after he's been discommunicated from the blessings they praise God, he's looking at Jesus and he says, Who is he, Lord? He knew that was Lord. Just like Paul, blind on the road to Damascus. Blind, knocked off the horse, blind. He's seen a light and he heard a voice. And he said, Lord. He knew it was the Lord. When God touches you, you'll know who He is. Amen. He said, who is He, Lord? That I might believe on Him. Listen, He already knew who He was. He knew Jesus was Lord. Then Jesus said unto him, You have both seen Him, <laughs> and it is He who talks to you. Now listen, proclaims the greatest revelation that could ever be given to any person at any time is to realize who Jesus is. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. Now listen to this. It says, what did he believe? He believed that Jesus was the true Son of God, the Savior of mankind, the Redeemer of the world, the Messiah of Israel, both for the great miracle of healing that he received and as well the great salvation he has now received, which was the greatest gift of all. And Jesus said, I am, I, for I judge judgment, I come into this world and they which see might not might see and that they which see might be made blind. Now listen to this in the Pharisees. And some of the Pharisees which were there with him heard these words and said unto him, are we blind also? Because Jesus was saying to them, it's sort of like laying it out there for them and then they were looking like, you trying to say we're blind? Ain't that the way we are? You trying to say we're blind? Jesus said unto them, if you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say we see, therefore your sin remains. So he's telling them, he said, this guy was blind. Now he sees. He's not only seeing physically, he's seeing spiritually. And Jesus said, now his, your sins remain because you say you see and you really don't. He said, therefore they guiltily and ter ter trembling sin and refuse the true light. They refused the true light, which meant that the light they did have would be taken away with them being left totally blind in a spiritual sense. Now, I'm going to read something to you. I wrote this down. There is a key to being born blind. For we were all born blind. I began to see at 34 years old when I was born again. That's when I began to see. I was blind for 34 years. This man was like, if you go back and study out, they say like 38 years old. I was blind for 30 Four years. And on July 20, 1997, I begin to see. I begin to have understanding. I begin to hear. 
I begin to have knowledge. And in closing, I want to read one passage of Scripture to you. Prophecy all the way back from Isaiah. Isaiah 42, 16 through 18. He's got it on the board. It said, And I will bring the blind by the way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and the crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. So he wasn't talking about physically blind. He's prophesying way into the future when Jesus is going to, there to show them the right way and show them how to get on track. They shall be turned back. So in other words, they've turned away and they're blind. This is getting over into the millennium. This is getting over into the second coming. He said, and they turn back and they shall be greatly ashamed who trusted in graven images, who say the molten images, who are our gods. Now listen, hear ye deaf and look you blind that you may see. Now how would he be talking to someone that's blind and saying look? He's talking about to the scriptures. To the way of life. He said, hear ye deaf and look ye blind that you may see. Previously because of their rejection of Christ Israel has been deaf and blind. Now and we speak of the second coming. Israel will then hear and will hear. In the second coming their eyes are going to be open. Their ears are going to be open. The good thing the church the bride of Christ we have the opportunity today Listen, then all the earth, I wrote this down, and I have to look back. It says, them and all who are in the earth will hear and see and understand Jesus is the Lord and King of all. Amen. How about you this morning? I got done before 12 o'clock. I never believed I'd go through 41 scriptures. In 45 minutes. I wouldn't have believed it. Listen. It's all come down to this right here. The light of life has come. Jesus. Jesus has come and Jesus has gone. But Jesus said, I'll send a comforter back. And he said, you'll be the light of the earth. You'll be the salt of the earth. It falls on us. With everyone standing to their feet in this house. Where are you at? And your walk with Christ. How is it with your soul? Are you blind? I know you didn't come in with a seeing eye dog. I know you didn't come in with a, some, something in your ear where you couldn't hear. When Jesus was saying, I'll make the crooked way straight, Isaiah prophesied it, and then Jesus stood before the Pharisees and said, if you would have been blind, you'd see. The blind man was teaching the Pharisees. And they said, here you are. You were born in your sins. You're teaching us. You know, that's the way a lot of people look at me a lot, and look at a lot of you sometimes. They look, man, I know who you were and I know how you lived. Are you going to teach us? But see, I was blind. And at 34, I got sight. I got vision and I got hearing and I got understanding and I got knowledge and I got wisdom. How old will you be? This man was 38 and began to see. It wasn't so much the physical part of seeing. His eyes were open spiritually. And he began to teach leaders. How about you today? How about all through this house with every head bowed and every eye closed? And everyone taking a self-examination of themselves. Listen. And so we said, what you do? I just spit. <laughs> no, I'm not Jesus, but we're the light of the world because Jesus left us here. And he said, greater works than you. Well, you do. Spittle's been spit on the clay, and we're rubbing it on your eyes now. Just with your eyes closed, with every head bowed, never eye closed, the spittle's being wiped on your eyes, even as we speak. God's beginning to penetrate that heart. God's beginning to tell you, listen, are you 34? Are you 38? Are you 40? Are you 45? Are you 12? Are you 18? Are you 44? Who are you? Where are you? Are you yet blind? Are you deaf? Can you hear or can you see? God's speaking to your hearts even as I'm praying. I'm fixing to pray and as I pray, 
if you need prayer, a special prayer, we want you to come to the middle. If not, if you just want to spend a few moments in the altar, the altars are open. But I'm going to pray you just come. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you for this moment of time. Got a whole family getting baptized next Sunday. I thank you for that, God. That's a family that come to know Christ as their Savior. It's a family that got eyesight, that begin to see. Not physically, but they begin to see spiritually. For Lord, we were all, I know the Pharisees said you were born in your sin, but we were all born blind. We were all born in our sins. And we had to come to the light and to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. It's what gives us light. It's what gives us vision. It's what lets us know. Lord, just like the Galileans you spoke about, just like those of the tower that, that perished, God, you said except we repent, we'll likewise perish. I know something, how does that tie into this? It ties in because we were all born blind. And if we're not born again, we're still blind. And we cannot see the kingdom of God. And just like the Galileans that were sinners, you think they were sinners above all? No, we've all sinned and fell short of the glory of God. So this morning, it's our opportunity to come to Christ and say, Christ, open up my eyes that I can see. Save me, Lord. Write my name down in the Lamb's book of life that me and my family and my home can have eternal life. Lord, that we can see and not be blind to the things of God. Lord, I pray over this whole congregation. Lord, over those that are in the altar, God. Lord, just keep your hand and lead us and guide us and direct us in the paths of righteousness. Lead us after the things of God. Lord, tonight, I pray for Brother Bobby that you've given him a word for this church tonight, God, that we'll take him. And go out into the highways and byways, God, and just speak to people. Let them know, God, even this morning, this service, that we're the light of the world. And we're to be a light wherever we are. We're to be a witness and a testimony. And tell people why we do. Hey, it was because a man named Jesus touched me on July 20, 1997, that I received sight. And I'm able to see. Thank you, Lord. God bless each and every one of you. Shake a few hands, hug a few necks, show the love of God. I'd like to meet with leadership in one of the rooms. If not enough room, we'll go upstairs. But all who are involved, we got a few things we just want to go over. God bless you.